Um, all right, I see one comment. Uh, it says, um, Hi, K, can you show how you draw support and resistance on the daily time frame? Um, sure. Uh, the way I draw the support resistances on the daily chart is um, so basically, I look at the key levels. And what I mean by the key levels means the pushbacks or pullbacks where the market broke the previous resistance or previous support. So in this case, since this is downtrending, first of all, I would only draw the lines to the downside because this is down. I'm looking for the sell chance and I want to see the target. I want to see potentially where the market might be bounced. So I know, I'm not going to, for example, I'm not going to draw the horizontal line like here. I'm not going to draw this one because this is bearish. So we don't need this line right now. Uh, if it's if the market is going up like this way, along the way, then uh, you can draw the resistance here because this is a potential target also. But since this is down, it may break the support. So the first of all, I'm not going to draw the line here. So uh, in this example, um, in terms of the daily chart, obviously there was a previous support level here at 0 0.9964, or more precisely, more precisely here, 0 0.9970 is was the previous support from the 7th of March. Yeah, and then we have a new support that was made by today, which is over here, 0 0.9945. So, in this case, I would draw these two lines. Or maybe I'm not going to draw this one based on the daily. Based on the lower time frames like the 5 minute, as I mentioned before, I would, draw the, I would draw the line on this one because this was a new support in the 5. And then I still keep this one based on the daily previous supports. So that's how I draw. And also, coming back to the daily time frame, if I squeeze the chart all the way, if I zoom out all the way like this, then there are some you know, candlesticks over here. And I want to see the details of the candlestick over here. So I will zoom out, sorry, zoom in on this on these candlesticks. And I found that there was a double bottom here. There was a double bottom. And in this case, I draw two lines here and here. Especially over here was important because this is closer to the current price level. And also, this can be the potential target. This can be the initial target uh, when you sell. The trade. So I think this, I will draw the line here, 0 0.9776 level. And also the swing low over here is also important, 0 0.9655. So I will draw these two lines on the supports and keep it. And the reason in this case why I draw the line here, 0 0.9776, is that this is the key level because from here, the market broke the resistance, the previous resistance, and kept going up this way. So, so that means if you are thinking about the buyers from the 26th of January uh, 2015, uh, the buyers would keep holding the buy, and they put the stop losses below the support. Right, so they are still holding the buy. They may still hold the buy, and most likely the stop losses they place are as below the support here. So that's why once the market breaks the major, the previous resistance, this pushback becomes very, very important. And so here too, um, there was a pushback, and from here the market went up, broke the resistance. So this pushback becomes very important because the buyers from here has been placing the stop losses below 
that pushback. So that's why the support in this case may work in the future. In this case, looks like it broke. But uh, usually it works. And uh, if it goes up this way continuously and retraces backwards, the buyers give up. Here, when it touches, when it touches the stop loss, the buyers give up. And the market may go down continuously afterwards. That's why I, I would draw the line here too. But right now, the price is all the way below that level. So I'm not going to draw the line here either. But that's how I look at uh, which pushbacks I draw the resistance support, which one I wouldn't. So, for example, uh, let's see, um, let's see maybe here, um, if I see a pushback that doesn't break the resistance. So maybe here, um, there was a pushback, for example, over here, there was a pushback in the market went up afterwards, but along the way up, it has, it had actually a couple of other pushbacks once and twice, three times pushback in the market slightly broke the resistance exactly on this candlestick. So if I see this pushback, I don't think that this pushback is not really important because after this, the market pulled back and it didn't break the resistance on the end wave. So which one the market broke the end wave was actually here on this doji. I would think that the support on this doji was more important than here because from this doji, the buyers came in and the buyers are are powerful enough to break the previous resistance and went upwards. So that's why the buyers will put the stop losses below that doji. So once it's taken, the buyers may give up and this downtrend may be persistent. So that's how I draw the lines. So I don't draw the support for resistance just because it's there, just because it there is a support, there is a resistances, but uh, I always look at i always think about the buyers and sellers uh, stop losses perspectives and draw the lines accordingly and i do this on the daily chart but also i do also this on any time frames i do so that's how i draw the lines so coming back to that the chart right now so in this case in terms of the daily chart, I draw the line here again because there was the previous uh, previous uh, support with a long wick, and also there was an end wave bullish in this case. It didn't break the all-time high. It didn't break the swing high, but at least there was an end wave bullish along the way. So I can see that uh, this uh, pushback was strong, and also the long wick in support. So I will draw the line here because it's also close to the current price level. And then also draw the line on the lower time frames. So in the five minute, we have a double bottom here. So I draw I draw the line like this. More precisely, I will draw the line on top on the tip of the week, like this way. Uh, 0 0.9945. Yeah, that's how I draw it. Oh, and also one thing more important is that when I say this, sometimes I get the questions like, so, hey, do you not really look at this week over here? Because there was a, a bit overshooting week. So you, you're not going to draw it on the tip of the week on this one instead of these ones. And so this is actually how I think about the lines actually i do i will i do draw the lines but uh, my view is in my mind i draw one single line but in my mind it's like this uh, rectangle like this so i will i will regard this as a as like a support zone and uh, i will make sure 
that the market breaks this support zone clearly down this way. That's what I mean by the breakout. Sometimes the market will be supported at the previous week or the second week or somewhere in between. Sometimes it will be supported somewhere in between and push back on this way. So trading is not like one plus one, plus one equals two. Sometimes it becomes zero, sometimes it becomes three, sometimes it becomes 1.2 is the answer. So you don't have to be exact exactly which, ha which line you should draw. You don't have to be that exact. But if you can get the rough sketch of roughly where the market may be supported, that's already enough to draw the lines. So it's okay, it doesn't have to be bounced on this example exactly here. Sometimes it may be supported above it without nowhere, it may be supported and goes up too. That happens too. But if you can get the rough idea of roughly where the market will be supported, that's okay. So yeah, you don't have to be perfect in drawing the lines. You don't have to believe that this is the only number you have to draw, 0 0.9945. Around 0 0.9945, the market may bounce. That's the correct mindset. Thank you for watching the video until the end. And before ending this video, I would like to add one more thing that is important in psychology. And this is my favorite. And the proverb is, never try to get a head and tail the fish. And only get the body part of the fish because that's where the juice is. And what this really means is that sometimes you may try to capture the pips from the beginning until the end of the trend. And But you have to remember that that is impossible to get all the pips from the beginning until the end. You can only get the body part because that's where the juice is. And that's why whenever you see trends, you better think where is the head? And where is the tail of the big fish of the trend and only try to get the body part. So that means uh, you can, after you confirm the trend happening, you enter the market, but that will be too early. You have to confirm the trend, continuous trend, uptrend or downtrend, but never try to get the beginning of the trends. Also, whenever the market goes flat in sideways after the big trends, you never exit just because the market retraces. That retracement might still be up temporary and the market may go up continuously. But sometimes the market goes backwards heavy and maybe reverse end wave, maybe some kind of reverse confirmations and the market starts to go down continuously. Then you exit there with some profit. So never try to get the head and tail of the fish is Actually, that is very important. And my strategy is built in this way. So hopefully you stick to this idea and become a successful trend follower. So until I see you on the next one, please stay healthy and stay safe and stay gold. All right, bye for now. Matane. Thank you.